What are the most useful words in Russian language when you come to visit Russia or when you are talking to a native speaker and you want to show that you know some important words? I guess it really depends on the purpose of your visit and on the person with whom you are speaking at the moment. And I just want to share 10 most useful words uh, that were used by my husband. He comes from Germany uh, when he came for the first time to visit my family here in Russia. The first word uh, is the word that my husband knew even before he met me. And this is a word that many foreigners know. Um, and it's Здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. You would use this word to greet people. In which situation would you use this word? Uh, in Russian we have uh, two forms uh, as in German to the pronouns du und sie. Um, so in English you would say just you to both of them and in Russian you would say the when in German you use du and we when in German you use sie. And this is really helpful if you're a German speaker or you know German. In all the situations where you would use sie in German, use Здравствуйте. So in my mind at least, this is the people that are much older than you and you want to show your respect. And then the people that you don't know and uh, uh, you just see them every now and then maybe in the supermarket, working in the supermarket or in the shop or in the post office. Um, and anyway, you would like to get uh, any kind of service. Uh, this is the, also the word that children would use at school to greet their teachers. Здравствуйте. And later in university, this is the same way you would greet your professors. Um, and I think that the second most useful word uh, is the word that you would use in the situations of do. So in Russian, ты. Uh, when you feel like you can say do to this person, then say привет. And привет is the word that you would use with all the friends and people of your age. So uh, here it was very useful for him because he met a lot of my friends. And if you're learning Russian, there is one thing that can make your life easier in the beginning. Uh, you can choose to learn, in my mind at least, I'm not the Russian teacher or anything, but it was easier to learn only one form. Because in Russian it's a bit more difficult than in German with the uh, uh, do and z form. They're very different for different words. So with my husband we decided just that uh, do is uh, more appropriate to learn because uh, you have more contact with people of your age and my family is not conservative at all and when he's saying um, do uh, and ты in Russian and привет for all the members of my family they feel okay with that and I guess a lot of people will feel okay with this as well. Though in the shops you many times you're not speaking a lot with people so you would just say здравствуйте and to say goodbye also another word that I will tell later though probably you know it uh, you better use the official version. I read many times that um, people think that this is an important phrase to learn and uh, this is also what is believed to be important when you learn any other foreign language and the phrase is меня зовут so my name is my name is but it's I think it's actually not that important in the beginning and I would not include it in the 10 most important phrases um, because actually it sounds quite out of the textbook, no? When you say in English, my name is Valeria. That sounds a bit odd and many times you would say I'm Valeria or just the name. And in Russian that's the same. You can say just your name or you can use the pronoun I uh, and in Russian it's ja, like in German ja, nein, ja, so easy to remember. Um, and you can say ja and your name. Or even, I think even more natural would just to say your name and uh, then shake hands for example or hug. Uh, this is really also quite a big question for me with um, shaking hands and hugging in different cultures, but this is for another video. 
Next two words are probably also the ones that a lot of foreigners know, but anyway, they are very, very helpful. And I would add some important description to them. Uh, the words are um, спасибо, and спасибо is thank you, спасибо, very important one, uh, and it's nice to be always polite. And the answer to this would be пожалуйста. This one is tricky to pronounce, I think because of zh in the middle of the word mainly. Пожалуйста. And when you know uh, Russian letters and Russian alphabet and you know how to read the word пожалуйста, you would also be surprised because it's pronounced quite different from uh, how it is written and how you would read it just uh, letter by letter. Uh, but uh, the thing that was interesting for us is this is not the only response that you can get. So, пожалуйста, there are equivalents, there are kind of synonyms. And uh, one is на здоровье. And this one means to your health. So, when somebody gave you uh, I don't know, a cup of tea and you say спасибо, the answer from the Russian person can be на здоровье, to your health. The thing is, you would mainly hear that from uh, people that you know, um, not in the cafe or restaurant, um, but in the household, mainly maybe parents and grandparents use this. But it's, I, I never noticed that before, but it's really used a lot, uh, especially by my mom. Uh, and I never thought of uh, teaching that to my husband. So when he arrived and uh, for his uh, спасибо, the response from my mom was на здоровье. Uh, he was very surprised because he was um, not expecting to hear that. And there is one more synonym for um, пожалуйста, на здоровье, and it is не за что. Не за что. Uh, it's written in three different words but pronounced all together. Не за что. Не за что. The direct translation would be not for what. So it's nothing to thank you, that there's nothing, there's nothing that you thank me for. What? No. Um, there is nothing to thank me for, uh, like this more or less. Um, yeah, that was the words number three and four. Let's go to number five. The word number five is quite specific and I don't know if that would be useful for everybody uh, the same way as здравствуйте, привет, uh, спасибо and пожалуйста, but it was very useful for um, my husband and the good thing that for many foreigners this word would be not difficult to remember. First reason, the word is short. Second reason, it's the word that is used in many, many languages, though not in English and not in German and not in Spanish as well. The word is чай. Probably a lot of you know this word and not know what I am talking about. Чай is tea. And the word was useful because we're drinking a lot of tea here. Um, I would love to say that in general in Russia we drink a lot of tea, uh, I don't want maybe to generalize that much, but in this house we drink a lot of tea, many times three, four, five times a day. Um, and many times we finish our eating with tea, so during breakfast and then after lunch, after dinner and somewhere during the day we would also have some tea. Uh, so the word chai was very useful. Uh, why is this word known for many foreigners? The reason is that the word um, tea and the word chai are close to the only two roots that we have to describe this drink, this beverage. Uh, the chai tea, uh, it comes from uh, China and it originated in China. And I'm, I'm sorry if I'm uh, making some small mistakes here because I don't know Chinese, uh, but the story is, I read it some years ago and I think it's a really interesting one, that um, um, in China you have uh, one symbol um, to describe this beverage and I will try to find it and put it here, uh, but in different regions of China you would read it differently. I think this is also a well-known fact that though in, in Chinese many um, symbols are written the same in different regions and parts of the country people re will read them uh, differently. 
and uh, um, the word chai um, cha or chai close to this pronunciation uh, it was in the part where the Silk Road started and from the Silk Road people brought a lot of different uh, goods a lot of different stuff like um, spices and um, unusual things like tea uh, to all all around the world and now in the countries where people use the word close to the word chai uh, this beverage the leaves they came from the this part of china where the silk road started that's why they have this root still in the word and the part of china where uh, the word the word was um written the, sorry not written the word was read by people like something more like tea it was the coast the coastal area and from there dutch people bought it and they heard how people called it tea close something close to the tea pronunciation and then the dutch sailors they brought this tea to many areas uh, in the world and there uh, it's still called something close to tea i think it's a really really interesting story and in the internet uh, there are a lot of maps where you can see how the word uh, spread uh, all over um, Europe and uh, also in Asian part. Uh, I'll try to find it and put it here. So uh, the different colors of dots show how the uh, word spread. The red ones are um, something close to chai and the blue ones are something close to Tea. I'm really curious if you can find your country uh, on the map and you can tell us how you pronounce the word and maybe write a transcription because it's not always really chai and not tea. There are some small uh, differences. So if you can write the transcription and the name of your country in the comment section, that would be really interesting to read. Words six and seven are connected with colors. And you would say colors maybe are not that important in the beginning. And I think you're right, they're not that important. Though my husband knew all the colors when he arrived uh, to visit me here in Russia, the two ones I would say are important and they are black and green. And try to guess why they are important? Because they're connected with my previous word, chai, and uh, uh, many times people would ask you uh, if you want green or black tea. Chorni или зелёный. And in the cafe as well, in the restaurant maybe, it will be nice for you to uh, see and understand the words if you can read some Kyrillian alphabet. When you're visiting a um, family or household or your friends uh, and that this family is drinking a lot of tea, uh, you can interact a bit also about uh, tea and brewing tea. For this you would need to know some more words but um, it's not that difficult, you can find them, you can find in the internet the cattle, water and some other things that are important for this process. But for the beginning, chorni chai, black tea, zeloni chai, um, green tea, um, can be enough to make your host happy to hear that you know some Russian words. And maybe the next word is also a bit unexpected here in the 10 most useful words, but uh, in my mind it was useful. The word is yisho. And you can hear it in a very simple sentence like yisho chai. And yisho means more. So it will be basically more tea. And you'll hear the question intonation here. And there may be some more words included in the sentence. But when you hear yisho, chai or yisho and any other kind of food for example at the table you would understand that it's more do you want some more of something um, and there you probably i don't need to teach you probably that you can say da for yes and net for no last two words are more obvious and maybe you even know one of them or both let's see in a second uh, one word that you can know and a lot of foreigners know uh, as до свидания and you can see that it's written in two words but pronounced all together до свидания don't pronounce it до свидания 
uh, with a big pause in between. Though I heard that in many films, when it's Russian accent and Russian person, you would hear something like do svidanie, uh, very um, separated, but actually it's not. To explain um, some things about Russian language to my husband, I use expressions Z form and do form quite often and I think they are very convenient for explanation. As I told you in the beginning of the video with uh, Zdrastvite uh, and Privet, you could also apply them when you want to say goodbye to people. Um, all the situations where you, you like to use Z form say до свидания, and in uh, all the rest, where you feel comfortable with do form, um, you would say пока. And this one is shorter and easier to pronounce, so maybe you can learn this one and surprise some of your Russian friends. And again, at the end of my video, I want to inspire you to learn some words from another language when you visit uh, this country or when you have a contact with people who are speaking this language. It's always very nice to see that people are making even a small effort to learn some uh, words from your mother tongue and they are interested in your language. If you like this video, consider subscribing, thumbs up and see you next time. Пока!